Hi, and welcome to another video from the CTAG Clinic. My name is Dr. Mike Lloyd, and I'm the clinic director. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at dissociative amnesia and ways of being able to reduce this. For many people, amnesia is an extremely distressing and problematic thing, as they simply cannot remember things on a day-to-day -day basis. While not being able to remember things from the past might be useful, and that's where the dissociation comes in, because dissociative amnesia is about being able to remove access to potentially overwhelming and distressing traumatic memories from the past, in everyday life, it's extremely difficult because people cannot focus and cannot retain information on a day-by-day -day basis or are restricted in terms of what they can remember. So they're doing lots of things that they can't remember or they may plan to do things and they don't end up doing them because they can't remember to do them. This is different from ordinary forgetting. As we know with dissociative amnesia, it's a very different thing. What dissociation does is it blocks or pre provides a barricade or a barrier to those memories to stop the person becoming re-traumatized. That's fine, but it does need to be resolved. Now, approaching dissociative amnesia is realistically needing to be prepared for the potential intrusion of traumatic memory. So this is something that's only done and is only advisable to be done and recommended within the context of therapy or when a person feels safe and able to be able to start looking at their traumatic memories. If that's not the case, for example, if a person is in an extremely unstable situation, life situation, then this really isn't something that can be done. It's worth knowing that there's a process that can be started. Um, so it can be approached very gently, but obviously be very careful because reducing a barrier to amnesia can mean that a lot of other stuff comes in that you don't want because you're trying to access some things that you do. That's the nature of memory. It's a little bit of a catch-all and it doesn't really have a very good filter for what you want and what you don't want. It's kind of all just there or it isn't. So be mindful of that and obviously be prepared if this, if this is something to be undertaken, ideally done within therapeutic setting. What we're trying to work on then is the basis of safety. The, the memories from the past feel unsafe to the mind. They were overwhelming at the time, therefore they felt unsafe, a threat and therefore they've been dissociated out of the person's awareness and everyday life. If we want to reduce that barrier, we have to make sure that the pathway to those memories feels safe for the brain's memory systems. So remember, this is a physical system within the brain that is designed to organize and sort memories out, and we have to work alongside that. That's really, really important to know. So reassuring the pathway, if you like, by saying to it, it is safe for me to approach memory. It is important that I get hold of these memories from the day to day because these memories are okay. These are positive everyday memories that I need. And the stuff from the past is the negative traumatic memories that maybe at the moment I don't need. So it's starting this process of discrimination between what is safe and what it may be unsafe. So by being able to reassure the brain, we need to provide evidence that things are okay. So the plan for this is to work with each day and find one event that could be considered to be memorable or positive. It does not matter what it is, so long as it has a either neutral or positive component. So it could be that you've gone on a walk and you've seen some apples lying on the, on the grass underneath an apple tree, and you look and it goes, isn't it wonderful that there's fruit on the ground? So that can be the sort of memory. You might see a car that you particularly like, or someone might say something which is really interesting. You could see a TV program that you really like. It's to study that memory, to be mindful, to focus, to learn the detail, to stop in the moment, concentrate, and work with that memory. Try and recall and try and put in as many details as possible and label things. That is the thing I saw. That is the thing I heard. That is the thing I felt. I want to remember these things. And saying to the brain, I want to remember this stuff is really important. So, and then later on in the day to have a cue or a reminder to try and bring back that memory. So you don't wait another day. You do it within the context of the same day. Try and come back to that memory. See if you can recall and remember it. And then again, the next day, you see if you can bring back that memory. So what you're doing is you're walking that pathway to the new positive memory as an act of deliberate conscious will to try and reassure the brain and focus your attention on that memory and say to the brain, it's okay for me to have this. And that's something to practice every day. So if it starts working, generate new memories. So keep working, but keep trying to remember the first one. So it could be that on day one, 
you find the memory on day two, you do the recall, day three, do the recall, day four, do the and eventually, if it works, you'll get a bit bored of remembering the same old memory that's now in a different memory system, like long-term memory, and you try and find a new memory and do the same process again. This is a practice, practice, practice. It does not matter if it does not work. It's about keep practicing doing this. We wouldn't expect something to work on the first time. It requires practice, motivation, and commitment to keep doing these things. And if it does work, that's great. You start being able to develop confidence in your memory and you find a way of being able to remember more and more important stuff. And then what might happen is that actually some intrusive memories from the past may start appearing. That's when you need to be prepared and that's a whole different thing to be able to work with. And again, therapeutically, that's why you need to be in therapy to be able to address and process those traumatic memories that may have been forgotten through the process of dissociation. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, an interesting thing to, to, to consider. Again, the, the, the safety message is very, very clear. Don't try this if you don't feel ready or able to do so, or if it's not safe to try and tackle these things. If it does, be prepared for what might happen. It might not work, or it might work very well, and therefore the barriers might start reducing and you start getting intrusive memories. Be mindful and careful of that. And uh, you, even if you don't want to start it, it's at least something to know that there's something that can be done. So maybe later on down the line, when it is more safe or more stable, this is something to come back to. It's just something to work with because I know from speaking to many, many people with amnesia that it's a really, truly horrible thing to experience and to, to have the confidence to know that the things are happening in the everyday can be remembered because you want to remember them is a real gift that a lot of people who don't have amnesia absolutely take for granted but we know that it is a really important thing to be able to have in your everyday life so i hope it goes well leave some comments below in the video uh, to let me know what you think of this and um, we'll keep making videos and do all the usual stuff share like subscribe all that thing so before the next video please do take great care